Good afternoon, everyone. We are still live from Summer State University for our webinar series on on-air learning, rediscovering radio for flexible learning. This morning, we have reached 2,900 plus viewers on our FB Live and more than 1,100 views on YouTube. This means that we have reached a huge crowd of academicians who are one with us on this endeavor of making learning possible amidst the pandemic. This morning also, Assistant Professor Lester Erdan of UP Los Banos shared to us that we must exercise our power with great responsibility. It is by abiding to the rules and regulations of the KBP or Kapisana ng mga broadcasters ng Pilipinas. We also felt the need of radio as support to LMS, repurposing radio to provide education in a humanitarian crisis is a quick and smart solution. For this afternoon's session, we are going to get acquainted with the essentials on writing scripts for school on air lessons. This will be the session where we get to translate our self learning modules into radio-based instruction. And to introduce our resource speaker for the session three is the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences of Summer State University. Please welcome Dr. Flora Bobi Patasa. Greetings of a blessed day to all from Summer State University. It is with great honor and privilege to introduce to you our resource speaker. It is with great honor and privilege to introduce to you our resource speaker for this afternoon. His topic is From Learning Packets to Radio Scripts, Translating Self-Learning Modules into Radio-Based Instruction, Writing Scripts for School on the Air Lesson. 
Our resource speaker's name and achievement echo the essence of dedication, service, and compassion. He is a member of the Kapisanan ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas, Gamma Sigma Delta Honor Society of Agriculture, and the Association of Development Communication Educators and Practitioners Philippines. He is an alumnus of the International Institute for Film, Broadcast, and Arts, and the ABS-CBN Script Writing Workshop under the renowned writer Ricky Lee. He serves as juror in the KBP Golden Dove Awards and the Metro Manila Film Festival. He is currently a PhD candidate under the Media Studies Program of the University of the Philippines College of Mass Communication. He finished BS Development Communication, major in Community Broadcasting in 2007, cum laude. In April 2013, he earned his master's degree in the same field, minor in human resources management. He is the founder of Gandingan, the UPLB Scott Iskas Multimedia Awards, which started in January 2007 when he was chief anchor of the UP Community Broadcaster Society, of which he was also a founding and charter member. He is an advocate of critical media literacy and responsible use of social media and juvenile justice in children's welfare. He also advocates participatory leadership and communication for social change. He is an in-demand radio, TV, and online program and events host, creative multimedia events and concert director, engaging and effective workshop facilitator, trainer and resource person, and a dynamic performing artist. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Assistant Professor Mark Lester Del Mundo Chief. Hello, good afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa Samar. Pwede bang magpalakpakan? Pwede ba yung ano, makita yung palakpakan? Parang feeling ko uh, ang sarap mapakinggan yan ngayon. But yeah, maraming maraming. There you go. Maraming maraming salamat po for that very generous introduction. Parang mas kinabahan naman po yata ako lalo. Knowing that this morning you had over what? Um, almost 3,000 participants all over the Philippines. At baka mamaya, live na live din tayo sa buong universe, hindi ba? But yeah, thank you. I'm very happy to be part of this um, training workshop. You know, we have been working with DepEd and the Commission on Higher Education, uh, especially, uh, particularly in the radio-based instruction. So um, this is something that we uh, would like to really, uh, we, we, we want this to really work for our students. So I'm happy to know that um, Eastern Visayas, hosted by our two universities, are doing this uh, webinar this afternoon. So I hope you're doing good. I can see about 180 inside Zoom. And for sure, there are a lot of you who are tuned in via Facebook and YouTube. Um, if you think there is a problem with my audio or with my visual, just let me know. Um, uh, maybe the, the organizers will just, you know, buzz me in or whatever. So, yeah. Also, I just have to recognize that you guys, the, the two women that I have heard so far this afternoon, were really very good. Parang you're, you're already prepared na, for, for radio-based instruction. So parang nakakatuwa naman. So, all right, let's start this. I'm going to share with you um, my screen and later we will uh, try to do some interactive uh, activities with you. So... My presentation is about um, writing scripts for school on the air lessons. So this is about um, transforming your learning packets into radio scripts. So that's what we are going to do. So um, I hope I can be uh, very uh, uh, helpful to you this afternoon. And I can see a lot of people saying good afternoon. Uh, maayong uh, hapon sa tanan. Is that right? Oh my God, I hope, I hope I got it right. You have a very beautiful language there in Eastern Visayas. All right, so before we uh, proceed to the actual lesson, I hope you have another gadget with you or maybe in your screen right now, you can go to your brow browser and go to menti.com. Can you please go to menti.com and you enter this code. That's 4096 
0919-5619. I, I want you to uh, answer just a few questions. Actually, just a couple of questions. So you enter the code 4096-619. And um, hopefully, all of you can be there. I am going to share with you the here. All right. So you can see there the code. That's 4096-619. My question for you is, how are you feeling today? All right. I have one response already. Said I'm fine. Graced and favored, wonderful. Wow, these are these are important words that we'd like to see and we'd like to feel and hear today, right? I feel so alive, blessed, that's very wonderful. All right, and excited. I hope we can maintain that excitement up until this afternoon. And in waray waray, it's maupay nga kulop. Ayan, it's maupay nga kulop sa waray waray. Oi, waray waray. Oi, namis kong komenta nun, ha? All right. So you can see here a word cloud. So it actually um, depends on um, how many words you are uh, putting in. So the bigger the words here, the bigger or the uh, the bigger the number of people saying they feel this way. They're excited. They're blessed. Uh, they're happy, optimistic. That's good. Yeah, I know. Great, happy, good, blessed, empowered. I really hope we can be empowered, even if we're having. Problems with internet connections or whatever. Wow, 43, 45. Come on, let's reach maybe at least 100. Please let me know um, how you are feeling today. All right. Wow. You know, it's so nice to see these words, no? Very, uh, very I powerful words. Yes. <laughs> Meron yata akong phone in question right away. Okay. All right, meron lang nakapag unmute ng kanyang sarili. But anyway, so you're blessed, you're excited. These are very powerful words, and I'm happy to know that you guys are doing great. Roski also answered uh, via the chat box. Okay, 64. Can we reach about 100 in 30 seconds before we move on to the next? Um, Takloban Helen Igano, she's feeling great. Okay. Even those who are in YouTube and Facebook, please join us this afternoon. Let us know how you are feeling today. Okay. All right. So I would say that generally, uh, most of us are feeling wonderful. We are feeling great. We are feeling positive this afternoon. You know, I need that. Um, with, a, with the many things that we need to do, it's, it's very good that we feel this way. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. 82. Yes, very positive, sabi ni Carmela Yamada. And like, you know, this is what I, I like, no? Even in radio, when you do it live, and you can, like, see the reactions of your students, perhaps, this is very, very good. Fruitful, yeah. With the assistant professor Lester Ordan, you know, this morning. Okay, let's move on to the next question. All right. Who's done writing the learning po packets? Can I see your answers there? There are three options. You say, me, I'm done. You can say, still working on it. Or you're super struggling. I hope, I hope we won't get big responses for the third response. Still working on it. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Can you see that? The, the bars are moving. No, It actually depends on your answers. Okay, 11 versus 22, 24. Moving up, come on. It only goes to show that you guys are actually working hard. Grabe, these teachers, we are really the, uh, the future depends on us, no? Sabi nga ni Secretaria Gloria, is it right? The future depends on you, teachers. Okay, we have, grabe, mas mabilis, no? 72 responses. Can you see that? All right, so I can see now that Perhaps most of you are still working on it. That's very fine. That's very understandable. Um, I know your semesters are going to start very, very soon. In UP Los Banos, we're going to start in September 10. I must be very lucky that I'm still on study leave right now. But, you know, I feel for my teachers, my co-teachers, my colleagues who are working hard, no? To make sure that the learning uh, modules, um, the course guides are uh, being done. Okay, so 48. So most of you are still working on it. Thank you very much.
for all your responses. You're such a very interactive group. Maraming marami pong salamat. Diyan po nagtatapos ang aking... Uh, Doon na pala nagtapos yung talk. No, hindi naman, syempre. Um, simula pa lang po yan. Alright. So, now that we're done and uh, we feel positive this afternoon, I'd like to share with you our objectives for this particular lecture. All right. Number one, I want you at the end of the, le uh, the lecture to describe the principles of writing for radio, particularly for educational broadcasting purposes. Because, you know, I, I, I understand that um, some of you, if not many of you, are uh, advisors of, um, of a school uh, paper, right? Or the radio broadcasting group or whatever. Um, yeah. And number two, to differentiate writing modules or writing learning packets from writing radio scripts. Paano nga ba sila naging magkaiba? No? So ano nga ba yung, uh, uh, kumbaga dapat uh, nating malaman tungkol dyan? Okay. Now, this is a short video that I'd like to show you because um, I think we have deaf ed teachers right now this afternoon. No? Um, we have been doing this training workshops with them and we're also guiding them helping them advising them about how to do their radio based instruction so we recorded some uh, a sample for them and this is what happened behind the scenes let's watch this record quiet on the set ang mga akdang na may pag-uusapan natin ang mga pahayag sa pagbibigay ng mga patunay cut let's check first Nasabihin ko, may dala akong sampung libro na pinigisang lang palang kapal. Move mo lang ang content. Hindi, paliliwan. Pag action ko, record it. Ang una ay dokumentaryong ebidensya. Sa isang pahayag sa media, mahalaga ang mga dokumentaryong ebidensya. school on the air so you can see there I was a director um, our uh, colleague Louise was uh, a talent she is the radio teacher and we have our technicians uh, our chair Trina Mendoza was also there as a radio host all right okay so let's continue number one I know you you have been given uh, an overview of radio and as well as the rules this morning just a quick rundown of what you should also remember Radio as a communication medium lacks visual stimulus. You do not have this kind of like slides or whatever. It's purely audio if we can be very strict about it. So if you broadcast, the students would only be able to listen to your voice, the music and sound effects, all right? It's inexorable, it's ephemeral, like you cannot stop it. It will continue to air, the, the anchor will continue to talk. You cannot say, Excuse me, please stop. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to the comfort room first. Or no, you cannot do that. All right? And also, it is a companion medium. Like, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure some teachers right now are using um, this webinar as a companion medium. Meaning, um, you're listening to the audio, but you're actually doing something else. Maybe you're cooking merienda or whatever. But radio is like that, no? Um, talagang kasama natin siya in the background. Ganun lang yung radio. But of course, when it comes to uh, learning, kailangang mabago yon ng ating mga estudyante. So audience are mobile. They can actually move. They, they are easily bored. And often, they are distracted because they are doing a lot of things. All right? So this is how a radio script look, uh, looks like. I hope you can see that clearly from your screen. And someone else is uh, on. Naririnig ko yung hangin. Okay. So, um, ganyan po yung look ng radio script. And I'd like us to go through the different parts of it. There are two major parts. The first part is this, no? the upper part of it. It's called the title header. So, you have there the title of your show, the topic um, that you are um, going to discuss. You have the format. It can be a radio-based instruction or if you're going to use school on the air, that's 
also fine. Of course, if it's a news uh, program, then you put their news. So you also put there the length, how long the, the program or the script is for, who's the script writer, and your objective. So it's very important that you have the objective because at the end of the day, that's what we are going to measure. Okay? Next is the second part is the, what is it? The body, very simple lang, no? the body of it. But the body is actually divided into three parts. Let's look at the three parts. The first one is those numbers that you see. So they are line numbers, all right? They are called line numbers. They are very important because when you do the recording, if something needs to be repeated, like for example, um, host two, line eight, page one, you just have to say that. So it, it will be very easy for the script writer and the director and the talents to look at uh, which part we are all in. Okay, and then the next part is the source of sound column. So it's uh, the source of sound column is written in all caps, underlined. It may be in bold, but it doesn't necessarily have to be in very uh, thick font. Um, yeah, but it's um, all caps, underlined, and with a hanging indention, all right? So the source of sound column is an instruction whether the sound is coming from a, from a, the te a te a technician or the host, meaning the talent, no? So there you go. I'm going to discuss uh, more of that later. And the third part of the body is the copy block. So this is where you actually write the dialogue, the spiels, etc. So remember, the main parts of a script, words are too small. Don't worry because... Um, um, Aurelia, uh, we don't need the words yet, but uh, in the meantime, you can focus on uh, the basic parts of the script. I will zoom in later. So the main parts are two, title, header, and body. Um, you have uh, the body divided into three parts, a copy block, line numbers, and source of sound column. Okay. Now, there are also um, other parts. No, for example, this page two or the next page. So you have, you have there two words. These are from the title of the program. So you put it there followed by ellipsis and the page number. So you have the slug line and page numbers there. We repeat the page numbers three times so that it would be uh, easy for us to see right away as to uh, which page we are in. And also you have below the keywords. Okay, so the Q words says more and then end. So if it says more, meaning there's still um, something else that you need to record. And if, it's, if it says end, it's like 30 when you do um, writing for print. So 30 meaning it's the end. So it's done. All right. Okay, so there, the end part of it. Okay. Look at this part of the script. So as I mentioned, you have that in the source of sound column. But when it starts with biz, it's actually business line. So these are the technical instructions, meaning how you will insert the music and sound effects into your script. So you do this um, in all caps because these are instructions for your editor or for your technician. So these are cues for technical editor and they are written in all caps. Also... You can put their instructions no, for your host. So all instructions are also written um, in all caps. And everything that must not be read by the host or by the talent should be in all caps. But those that need to be read should be in sentence case. All right? Nakuha po ba yon? So kapag all caps sa script, hindi yun babasahin dahil yun ay instructions either for the technician for the editor or for the talent. Okay. So, let's look at this. Dalawa rin po ito, no? So, um, here, um, the instruction is do not cut the sentences, no? You move to the next page right away. Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Like, there are chunks, no? Um, perhaps if you're using, like, an A4 paper or a short bond paper, you would have up to 23 lines maximum double space po ang uh, radio script para madali po siyang masundan. Also, kapag may kailangang i-edit uh, right there and then pwedeng magsulat yung director, yung, uh, yung talents, no? Um, ng instructions or whatever or kung paano pa siya babasahin. So, kung makikita nyo po dun sa baba, hindi natin pinuputol. No? Tinatapos natin yung instructions or tinatapos natin yung linya. Kaya po ang radio script, hindi siya pare-pareho ng haba. Basta pag nakita mo na may more pa sa baba, ibig sabihin, 
may kadugtong pa siya. So kahit halimbawa, natapos siya ng 17, line 17, eh ini-expect mo hanggang line 23 ang isang page, pero bakit hanggang 17 lang? Ibig sabihin, maaari kasing maputol yung spills, so nandun na siya sa kasunod na page. Alright. So, take a look at this. So, yung isa, 16 pages, but the other one is 21. Uh, sorry, 16 lines, but the other one is 21 lines. Alright? So, wag nyo pong ikakat ang script. Also, ideally, kapag straight talk yan, straight talk na walang music, wala masyadong instructions, one minute per page. no? One minute per page. Ganun yung pacing ng pagbasa niya. Pero kapag meron na siyang instructions or it's a radio drama or whatever, it's about two to three minutes per script. So we, uh, there's, there's really no standard, but uh, at least we know that if dumating na tayo sa like 15 pages, kung two minutes yan, baka 30 minutes na yung naisusulat natin. Okay? Siyempre, depende rin sa delivery kung mabagal ba or mabilis. Okay po? Nasusundan ba? Yeah? Hopefully, no? Nakakasunod pa po kayo. Okay, so just a ju some general rules no, in writing for radio. Remember, not everything can be taught on air. So it lacks the visual stimulus. Therefore, there are certain concepts that are very difficult to discuss on air. No? Radio, in fact, is more effective when we complement it with other learning materials. For example, um, you have your visual aids or you have your learning packets or your modules given away to your listeners. You can use that as a complementary material for your radio-based instruction. But it, if it's going to be purely audio, meaning they will just listen to it, then there may be certain concepts that may not work no? when you use radio for, for instruction. Also, because there are uptime and downtime in, in terms of attention span, span like students, um, the longest for them, in fact, is five minutes. But yeah, we advise that your segments should not exceed seven minutes. For a radio-based instruction, the main lesson is can, can go up until 10 minutes. But within the 10 minutes, there will be some music insertions or a short activity or whatever just to boost again no, the, the energy of those who are listening to you. So for example, how many minutes have passed uh, after I started? Baka mamaya yung iba tulog na, di ba? So kailangan may konting pa-boost ng energy. Alright? Also, you have to keep in mind that one lesson in a module may not or may need more than an episode. So parang uh, uh, hindi, naman kay, hindi naman mangyayari na ang isang module, isang lesson lang. So if we have a maximum uh, time limit of 30 minutes on air per broadcast per lesson, then hindi naman po natin masisiksik lahat doon, di ba? So we have to be very, very uh, mindful of that. Okay. Are you okay? Are you still positive? Are we still keeping the energy, Eastern Visayas? Yeah, hey, Elma. Maraming salamat. Okay. Yeah, hey, Will. Okay, grab it. Thank you. Thank you. You're very active. Maraming, maraming salamat po. Let me now move on to some specific instructions when you transform your learning packets to radio scripts. So dito mas makikita natin paano nga ba sila nagkaiba. Okay, so tingnan nyo po ito. I know, maliit na naman po. Uh, pero kung nasa phone kayo, pwede nyo siyang i-zoom in like that. Or kung kayo po ay nasa laptop, um, pwede kayong lumapit ng mas malapit ng konti. Parang ganyan. Okay, but anyway, this is a sample that I got from... A very good friend of mine from DepEd San Pablo City. This is a draft, no? Um, part of a module. And this is, mind you, this is the only page from, what, a 30 to 40 pages na module that we picked and we transformed into a 30-minute radio broadcast. So that's the one that I showed you this afternoon. Yes, Big Brother. Okay. Uh -huh. Big Brother, baka parang may instruction si Big Brother. All right, anyway. So, ito po yung naging basehan ng ilang sample na ipapakita ko sa inyo. So, mag-zoom in tayo ng konti. All right, number one, general rule. You have to sound conversational. Ang radyo, companion medium yan, no? Parang tao lang yan na pinakikinga ng mga nakikinig sa atin. So, imagine ninyo na radyo tayo ngayon. Hindi nyo ako nakikita. O, nakikita nyo ako ng konti. At sunog na sunog yata ako sa tinde ng araw dito sa may bintana namin. Um... 
kailangan parang kinakausap natin yung mga, nang, yung mga nakikinig sa atin. So halimbawa dito sa script na to, no, uh, makikita natin. Kung may hindi kayo nauunawaan, matu- uh, mat- uh, tutulungan kayo ng ating host na si Teacher Mark at Teacher Trina para sa recap ng ating napag-usapan. May karagdagan din tulong mula sa inyong mga handout. Galingin nyo sa ating maigling pagsusulit mamaya ha. Salamat. So parang kinakausap natin yung mga estudyante. So pwede natin silang kumustahin. So it's really the you approach that we're using no, on air. So for example, even the host, they, they are talking to to the to the listeners. Narinig nyo si Binibining Luis Villanueva, na guro ng Pilipino, mula sa Kalawan Laguna. Talagang napakahusay niya. Tama? ba? Diba? So nakikipag-usap tayo para maramdaman ng mga estudyante na, yeah, we're still, ano... Oh, no, no, nostalgic. Ate Daday, nagulat naman ako. You're here. Nagulat ako kay Ma'am Daday. Ma'am Daday, hello. And to all my friends sa VSU. Sana makabalik ako soon. Alright. So, sorry ha. Nakikita ko kasi yung mga chat. Um, kaya I wanted to react right away para maramdaman nyo rin, di ba? Na, na talagang uh, very interactive tayo ngayong hapon. Okay. Of course, Another important rule is that one idea per sentence. Naku, paano ba yan? Eh, di ba mahilig tayo sa mga complex sentence, no? Hanggat maaari, isaksak natin ang lahat ng idea sa one sentence. But that's only good for print materials kasi pwede naman yan basahin ng, uh, ng reader on his own. Pwede niyang balikan pag di niya naunawaan. Eh, sabi nga natin, inexorable, ephemeral yung radio. Hindi natin pwede sabihin, stop! Hindi ko nasundan. Ulitin mo. Hindi pwedeng ganun. So, one idea per sentence. Take a look at this example. Ito po yung part na ipinagsulat namin ng script. Ito yung intro part doon sa module. No? So, sabi, may mga pahayag na ginagamit sa pagpapatunay ng katotohanan ng isang bagay. Makatutulong ang mga pahayag na ito upang tayo ay makapagpatunay at ang ating paliwanag ay maging katanggat-tanggap o kapanipaniwala sa mga tagapakinig. Ang haba, di ba? Karaniwang ang mga pahayag na ito ay dinurugtungan na rin ng datos o ebidensya na lalo pang makapagpapatunay sa katotohanan ng inilalahad. This is quite conversational already and this is based from a DepEd self-learning module for grade 7 in Filipino. But how does it look like when you transform it into a radio script? Tingnan nga po natin. Hala, mas mahaba na siya. So from five lines, naging uh, about 11 lines. no? So tingnan natin kung paano ito isinulat. So basahin ko sa inyo. Ha? Makatutulong ang mga pahayag na ito upang tayo ay makapagpatunay. Ang mga pahayag ding ito ay makatutulong upang maging katanggap-tanggap ang ating paliwanag. O kaya naman, maging kapanipaniwala sa mga tagapakinig. Karaniwang ang mga pahayag na ito ay dinurugtungan na rin ng datos o ebidensya na lalo pang makapagpapatunay sa katotohanan ng inilalahad. So you see that one sentence was divided into three sentences when it became a uh, part of a radio script. Tapos dinugtungan pa siya ng uh, iba pang example. No? So gaya ng aking halimbawa kanina, kung ibibigay ko ang ilang dalakong libro, etc. So ibig sabihin, kinakat natin yung idea para isang idea lang isang sentence. Mamaya, marami pa kayong makikitang example. Okay. So, illustrate or explain difficult concepts. Sabi nga natin, not everything can be taught on radio, pero pwede naman nating gawa ng paraan kung kaya talaga. So, let's try. So, yun pa rin yung example natin. At ito na nga yung ginamit natin sa baba, di ba? So, paano ba natin ma-explain pa yung sinasabi na kailangan ng ebidensya o ng pagpapatunay? So, sa line number 14, nagsabi tayo na, gaya ng aking halimbawa, halimbawa kanina, kung ibibigay ko ang bilang ng dalakong libro, mas mauunawaan nyo ang pakiramdam ko habang buhat ko ang mga ito. Kapag sinabi ko, mabigat ang dalakong mga libro, mas mararamdaman nyo ang bigat kapag sinabi kong may dala akong sampung libro. So, kumbaga, mas ini-illustrate natin o mas pinapa-imagine natin yung konsepto sa ating mga estudyante. Parang, ano ba yung support ang maibibigay natin doon sa claim na mabigat yung dala ko? I-describe mo pa siya. So, bigyan mo siya ng gano'ng karami yung dalang libro. O ito pa, lalo, lalong mas magiging malinaw 
ang bigat ng dala kong libro. Kung sasabihin ko may dala akong sampung libro na tigi isang dangkal ang kapal. Can you imagine a book? Times 10, tapos one, uh, one dangkal, isang dangkal ang kanyang kapal. Napakabigat nun, no? So, yan yon. So, you have to illustrate, no? You have to explain difficult concepts. All right. Next. Repetition is essential. Uh, sabi nga ay uh, paulit-ulit, no? So, puntahan natin itong number five. Itong nagpapakita. So, nakita nyo, no? Doon sa sample na mojo, isang diretso lang siya, one page lang siya. Pero paano kaya ito ipinaliwanag sa isang radio script? Number five, nagpapakita. Salitang nagsasaad ng isang bagay na pinatutunayan ay totoo o tunay. O ito ngayon siya sa radio script. Line two, sabi ng radio teacher, handa na ba kayo sa ikalimang pahayag? Oops, sorry. Handa na ba kayo sa ikalimang pahayag? Ang ikalimang pahayag sa pagbibigay ng patunay ay ang salitang nagpapakita. Tama, nagpapakita. So inulit niya, inulit ng radio teacher para ma-retain sa, um, uh, sa utak ng mga tagapakinig. Okay? So sabi pa ni teacher, ito ay salitang ginagamit upang isaad ng isang bagay na pinatutunayan ay talagang totoo o tunay dahil sa ipinapakita nito. May dalawa pang pahayag. O yan, so etc. etc. So, kumbaga, um, inuulit natin yung isang konsepto para mas maalala siya ng ating mga tagapakinig. At hindi lang yan, no? in fact, in the other parts of the script, uh, kung halimbawa kung pito itong mga pahayag na ito, Before mo sabihin yung pampito, i-recap mo na yung naunang anim para masundan pa rin nila. So may mga ganong techniques. No? So repetition is essential on radio. Generally, you, you use contractions. No? So mas pinapaigsi natin. So hanapin natin dyan yung mga contractions. No? So imbis na sabihin natin na ninyo, so gumagamit tayo ng mga mas maliliit na uh, words. No? Yung nyo, etc. Yung yan, hindi iyan. So... Yung mga ganon, para mas uh, conversational yung dating, di ba? Um, naiintindihan ko, syempre, kapag Filipino, medyo may tendency yung mga guro na mas maging uh, uh, formal, hindi ba? Pero sa radyo, we try to make it a little more conversation by using contractions. Okay. The next part is action first, no? So, action first, meaning verb. So, depende, if, in, if it's in English, sometimes the, uh, the subject, uh, well, most of the time, no, the subject is always first. Alright. Pag sa Filipino, uh, di ba yung sentences, ano nga po ba ang tawag dyan? Naaalala pa ba ng mga teacher natin sa Filipino? Kapag nagsisimula sa pandiwa yung kanilang uh, mga pangungusap. O halimbawa, dito sabi natin, kunin nyo na mula sa inyong kits, a quiz form, kunan, isulat. Ayan, no? So may mga um, actions na gustong, uh, sabi ni Elma, inverted order. So ganyan yung pagsulat sa radio. Pero in English naman, halimbawa, um, Ate Daday talks to Derek about the media relations office. Oh, for example, si Ate Daday or uh, Dr. Gabrilio. Okay, so pwedeng gano'n naman yung, yung example, di ba? So, nauuna yung, yung subject. Alright, so action first. Source first, no? And when you use the source, you use indirect quote. Oh, for example, ito po ay ipinahiram sa akin ni Arian. Arian, maraming salamat for coordinating this. This is from the Understanding the Self na Learning Packet. Although hindi ko alam kung sino nagsulat ng mismong Learning Packet. Um, pinahanap ko dun sa Learning Packet kung sino yung writer. But yeah, allow me to acknowledge you. So ito yung sinulat niya. So nasan dyan yung mga sources? Hanapin natin. So si Festinger. Is that Festinger? Si Bonk, Gibbons, tsaka si Van Lange. Tama ba ako? So, paano siya, oh, paano siya isinulat? O, oh, tingnan natin, no? So, psychologist Leon Festinger developed the social um, comparison theory. Social comparison theory. So, again, ah, take note of the repetition being done here. Social comparison, oh, ulitin ko ha. Tingnan ninyo kung paano inulit yung huling konseptong binanggit bago siya i-define. So, bukod dun sa source first, Bang, uh, 
pansinin natin yung paraan ng pagkakasulat na yun. So, psychologist Leon Festinger developed the social comparison theory. Social comparison theory is the idea that individuals determine their own social and personal worth. This worth is based on how they stack up against each other. The theory was developed in 1954. Can you compare that to the first sentence in the one with a picture? So, ibang-iba siya, hindi ba? Kasi iba yung pag-deliver. Again, um, you are talking to your students. So, you have to explain the concept to them very clearly. One idea per sentence, source first. And you use indirect quote. So, hindi uso yung in quotation mark no, sa radio script. O, ito pa. According to Bonk and Gibbons, others' self concept and self-esteem are also heavily influenced by the process of social comparison. Okay. So yung isa pa. Festinger, however, said that the most meaningful comparisons we make tend to be with those we see as similar to ourselves. Naintindihan po ba? Am I making sense? Easter Visayas, magparamdam nga kayo. Nandyan pa ba kayo? Ang dami ko na nakikita na Ano, they, they are leaving. Naku, baka nagkakaroon ng problema sa, sa internet. All right, yes, Pilita, maraming salamat. Okay, nauunawaan nila. Thank you so much. Alive na alive. Okay, all right. Shall I continue? Puntahan natin yung kasunod. Provide phonetic spelling. So imagine a radio script. Pwede may mga mahihirap na... Uh, words na banggitin dyan, hindi ba? At alam mo, ito classic example ito namin sa klase at natutuwa ako na doon sa isang learning packet nakita ko siya. At mahirap yung learning packet na yon ha? Ito yan. Water Supply Planning and Development. Nandito po ba ang writer niyan? Sino kaya ang writer nito? Learning Packet 3. Ah, Ma'am Christine Hamoay and Sir Jeff Harold Uy. Thank you so much for the learning packets. I'm using them as an example. I hope it's okay. Para lang mapicture natin kung paano nga ba natin gagawin. Alright. Ano kaya rito? Yung o medyo mahiri, mahirap banggitin. <clears throat> anong word? Sana nababasa ninyo, no? Uh, anong word? Felisa Gamboa, ang, Gomba, ang writer. Marami pong salamat sa inyo. Reservoirs. Ayan, reservoir. Okay. O, so, tignan nga natin. O, yan daw ang mahirap banggitin. Nako, VP, nako VPAA, Dr. Felisa Gomba, marami pong salamat. Oo. Okay, so there, reservoir. So paano natin yan isusulat sa radio script? Patingin nga. Sige nga, sino nga ang may sagot dyan? Paano isusulat ang phonetic spelling sa radio script? Sagot sa chat box. Tinata... Reservoir. Hi, ayan oh, sabi ni Carmela. Reservoir. Reservoir. Okay, sabi ni Joanne. Sino pa ang uh, sasagot? Reservoir. Ah, oh, sir nga no. Reservoir. Ha ha ha. Pwede ba yung ha ha ha? <laughs> Parang hindi, hindi. Iba na yan. T Tumawa na lang si Carmela. Okay. So tingnan natin kung paano ito isinulat. All right. Okay. So pwede naman yung zino pag uh, medyo pa pa French pa a British like a reser reservoir. Okay. So, water reservoir. So, tingnan natin, no? Yung difference nung ganun ka -igse. Look at the lines, no? Five lines lang. Five lines lang yung nandoon sa learning packet. Pero, sa script, napakahaba. Sabihin nyo, grabe naman. Parang pinahirapan naman natin yung writers. Eh, kung gusto po natin yung radio, ito talaga yung paraan, no? Nang, kailangan ba yun all caps, sir? O tamang tanong yan, Raymond. Kasi, Maliban sa mga instructions, ang mga phonetic spelling dapat ay uh, in all caps followed by the dash per syllable. Okay? Tapos nakadikit siya doon sa salitang kailangang banggitin. So, kumbaga exemption to the rule yan, pagdating doon sa sabi natin, all instructions should be uh, in all caps, di ba? Or everything that must not be read on air is in all caps. So, ang phonetic spelling... Um, ito yung exemption natin. So, nakadikit siya dun sa word na reservoir. Tapos, ito pa pala yung isang rule dyan. Ha? Gagamitin mo lang yung phonetic spelling sa unang banggit. No? 
Uh, halimbawa, dito sa example na to, napakaraming word na reservoir. Pero kung mapapansin niyo doon sa script, isang beses lang naman siyang isinulat. Kasi ang idea naman natin, alam na dapat 'yon nung host or nung radio teacher or nung talent. Kasi nga nabanggit na siya doon sa unang part. Okay? So you uh, usually sinusulat din naman ito sa sa mismong script kung nalimutan halimbawa ng writer na isulat yung phonetic spelling, isinusulat siya sa taas handwritten nga lang, no? O so basahin nga natin Uh, gusto ko mayroong isang teacher na magbasa ng example na ito live na live mula sa Eastern Visaya. Sino po ang pwedeng uh, maglakas uh, ng loob na mag-on air ngayon? Can someone please read? Sino po? Ayan, sino po ito? I'm Jessa Pocamo of Summer State University. Ay, grabe. Oo, yung ating host, yung ating moderator. O, sige nga. Pakinggan natin si Jessa. What are reservoirs vary in size and shape? This variation depends on their type. There are at least three types. These types include service reservoir, naturally occurring lakes, and man-made reservoirs. Let me discuss each type. The first type is service reservoir. Service reservoir is used for local storage of treated water. This can be smaller compared to the other two types. The second type of reservoir is naturally occurring lakes. They are bigger in size compared to a service reservoir. These lakes are often used for drinking water. Meanwhile, the third type is the man-made reservoirs. This type of reservoir is made by placing a dam across a valley. Remember, water reservoirs vary in size and shape depending on their type. Grabe naman. Palakpakan naman natin si, uh, si Jessa. O oh, yan. Congratulations. Pasok ka na sa The Voice Teens. Ay, parang kumanta pala. O oh, hindi. So ano ngayon ang napansin ninyo? Anong napansin ninyo sa pagkakasulat nitong script na ito? O di ba ang daming humanga kay Jessa? Meron ba? Pwedeng ano ha? Pwedeng mag-raise ng hand at pagsalitain po natin sila para naman hindi kayo mabor sa boses ko. Sino po ang uh, pwedeng mag-raise ng uh, ito ang napansin ko doon sa script compared to Okay. Sabi ni Rona, for instruction naman po yun, kaya hindi na kailangan redundant yung nakakapitalize. Tama. Okay. Oh, so, sino ang pwedeng uh, magbigay ng kanyang observation so far, maliban dun sa phonetic spelling, doon sa uh, script based doon sa learning packet? Sige nga, sino kaya? O, magsa-stop muna ako ng sharing para para makita nyo naman, makita natin sila. Sino? Sino ang uh, pwedeng magbanggit ng mga napansin? Alright, parang definition lang yan po sa reservoir. Okay, main idea was repeated. Okay, that's correct. My repetition. Ano pa? Ano pa po ang inyong napansin? Emphasizing the topic. That's correct. Conversational. Okay. Discussion of the type of reservoir. So, kung nakita ninyo, no, um, parang yung five lines talagang halos dumoble siya. Tapos talagang uh, yung idea niya ay inuulit at one idea per sentence. Okay. So, na-appreciate nyo na ba? May illustration, no? may pagpapakita. Daryl, tama ka dyan. Okay. So, tuloy po natin. Tuloy natin. I'm gonna share again my screen. At uh, ito naman yung susunod nating um, principle. Transition words help. So, tanapin nga natin yung mga transition words or yung sentences dyan na ginamit natin para 
ma-discuss, no? So kung papansinin niyo, no, yung ang yung sentence dun sa learning packet, dire-diretso lang siya. At saka by the way, no, pwede niyo po pala akong i-correct, baka meron tayo ditong um content um evaluator kasi hindi ko alam kung tama yung pagkakaintindi ko doon sa learning packet. So you can you can only imagine na kung ako yung nag ako yung estudyanteng nagbasa nung learning packet tapos ito yung aking pagpaparaphrase tama po ba ako sino po ba ang uh, teacher natin sa ano po ba to engineering po ba so water reservoirs vary in size and shape considerably tama sabi ni uh, ni Ma'am Felisa all right depending if they are a service reservoir for local storage of treated water natural occurring lakes that are used for drinking water or man made so nakita nyo, no hinati-hati natin yung tatlo kasi doon sa mismong learning packet niya dire-diretso na ito yung service reservoir ito yung gamit niya ito yung natural occurring lakes ito yung gamit niya ito yung man made lake ito yung uh, ginagawa sa kanya or whatever All right. So yung meanwhile, all right, nakita niyo yung meanwhile. Pero sorry na unang naguhitan yung let me discuss each type. So pero tama yung meanwhile, no? So these are the transition words or transition sentences. Halimbawa, pag sinabi niyo these types include service reservoir, nag enumerate kayo ng mga konsepto. So kailangan hindi naman kayo dediretso agad na oh, ganito yung first type. Lagyan niyo sila ng sense of listen to this. I'm going to discuss the next parts, one by one. So, parang ganun. Para maano din sila, ah, okay, i-discuss pala ni teacher, so magte-take down ako ng notes, or whatever, or susundan ko yung learning packet ko, di ba? So, para mag-guide sila. Tapos yung meanwhile, kasi nakadalawang concept ka na, so you say, oops, there's still another one. So, parang ganyan. So, that's how you write it uh, in a radio script. Okay. Remember. O, oh, meron pang remember. So, kung, Parang nagsusulat ka ng detailed lesson plan. Tama ka, Francisco. Okay. So, yung remember also. So, ito, pinapaalala natin sa kanila na tandaan yung una kong sinabi kasi pwedeng, alam ba, napalate sila ng tune-in, di ba? So, at least, naabutan pa rin nila yung gusto mong sabihin, which is the main point of the whole paragraph, no? That water reservoirs vary in size and shapes. So, Uulitin natin siya doon sa dulo at sasabihin natin, tandaan. Okay? Claro? Claro M. Recto. Okay. Sige. Let's move on. Use abbreviations um, uh, or acronyms sparingly and properly. Alright. So, syempre mahilig tayo sa mga pinaiigse kasi hindi nga natin kailangan yung sobrang mahaba, di ba? Pero alimbawa ito. Ano yung mga ginamita natin dito ng abbreviations or ng acronyms? Meron ba kayong nakikita? Sino mabilis mag-type ng sagot? Alin dyan yung inabbreviate natin? O, oh, DepEd, USAID. Alright, so tama. Okay, so yung dalawang yan, hindi ba? So yung DepEd at saka yung USAID. Sabi ninyo, eh bakit ganyan ang itsura niyan? Eh hindi naman ganyan isulat yan, di ba? So remember, sa radyo po, sa script natin, kung paano mo siya babasahin ng pabaybay, ganun mo siya isusulat. Kasi pwede nga halimbawa, kung hindi masyadong familiar si teacher sa DepEd, good luck sa'yo pag hindi ka familiar sa ano, di ba? So DepEd, so hindi naman DepEd, di ba? So, ganyan siya. Tapos, hindi naman, dahil sinabi natin, kagawara ng edukasyon, hindi naman siya kilala as kag-edu. Oh, hindi naman ganon, hindi ba? Or KE, hindi naman ganon. Mas kilala talaga yung DepEd or Department of Education sa DepEd, no? na, na abbreviated uh, form. Tapos, yung USAID, yung iba USAID ang sinasabi, hindi ba? So, pero sa iba naman, USAID, no? so u s Aid. So, ganun po yung pagsulat. So, kapag DOH, paano yung isusulat? Halimbawa, halimbawa ayon kay, Dep Ed, sec, uh, kay DOH Secretary Duque, o, paano yung isusulat ang DOH? Sige nga. D-O-H. O, ayan. So, may dash po. No? The part of health. Naku, hindi pwedeng the part of health. Parang ang, nakakatakot yun. Ha? Nag-depart ang ating health. Oo, hindi pwedeng the part of health. Okay. D-O-H. Okay. Alright. Ayan o, nagtawanan kayo ha. Kayo, tawa kayo ng tawa dyan ha. 
wrong spelling. Oh, wrong spell. Nako, teacher, wrong spelling, wrong. All right. So sa, sa radyo po, ang pagsulat ng mga abbreviation or yung mga letters, no? Um, Nakadash siya. O, tandaan nyo rin yun, ha? So, D-O-H. In fact, kaya kailangan maingat. Oo, at saka kailangan nire-rehearse yung script bago i-record. Okay? So, kahit sa teleprompter, kapag gumagamit po yung ating mga anchors, no, halimbawa, ganyan yung paraan ng pagkakasulat. So, kasi baka ma- magkamali yan ba o ng type, napaliit yung DOH, o ay di naging doyon, hindi ba? So, kailangan tama yung pagkakasulat sa script. All right. O, eto, handle figures properly. <clears throat> Excuse me po. <clears throat> Oh, tama si Roda. Ang sabi ni Roda, may pre-reading po ng script para ma-check pa yung kailangang ayusin. Very good. Ang gagaling nyo naman pala eh. Alis na ako. <laughs> Hindi. Ayan. Tama yan. Thank you very much for saying that. Also, dito alin yung mga figures. Medyo, um, puntahan muna natin itong figures na to. No? So, may nakikita tayo dyan na mga years, di ba? Written in numbers, in uh, in numerals, no? Symbols or whatever. So, ito naman ay sample sa isang kopya ng DepEd ng isang reader. Sino po yung mga taga-DepEd dyan? Alam nyo, gumagawa po kami ngayon ng uh, uh, script naman sa, uh, para sa mga taga-region 5 and 6. Uh, para po ito sa kanilang uh, literacy ng grade uh, 3, I think. Okay. Ay, ano nangyari? Alright, so tingnan nyo kung paano isinulat yung mga taon. Alright. So you handle figures properly. Um, sasabihin niyo bakit hindi bakit in English? Sabi itinayo ng mga Amerikano ang mansion noong 1908. Bakit hindi 1908? Bakit hindi, hindi ganoon? 1945. Aba, kailangan nating mag-adapt mga teacher no sa Filipino, acceptable po sa Filipino ha, hindi po sa Tagalog no. So sa Filipino, acceptable yung mixed na Tagalog at yung English lalo na kung ito yung paraan na kinagawian ng basahin ang mga taon. E tayo po sa Pilipinas, gano naman tayo magbasa, di ba? O anong date ngayon? August 17, 2020. O hindi naman natin sa Ay ngayon ay ika Labing uh, pito ng Agosto, taong dalawang libo at dalawampu. Napaka-formal, no? Baka mahilo ang ating mga estudyante. So, we use that, no? So, ganito siya. Ang rule, generally, ay listener-friendly broadcasting. Okay. Ang general rule ay um, you, you write it in words, no? You write it in words. Kasi babasahin mo din naman at the end of the day. Pero dito, we try to combine it thinking that we have a discerning talent or discerning si teacher. So, alam mo na, nakapag sinabi, 1945. So, kumpara sa 1908, di ba? Hindi siya 1908, 1908. So, ganun siya basahin. Pwede rin siya na full words. The better kung full words. Lalo na kapag sobrang laki noong uh, mga figures. Pero kapag yan ay milyon-milyon, usually, kinukombine natin yung words at saka yung numerals. The general rule is kapag below uh, 10, lahat yan ay words. 10 up or 11 up, pwede na yan na yung symbols, yung numbers mismo. Okay, klaro po ba? So, you write the numbers in words, lalo na kapag malaking, 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 malaking na yung number. Okay. So general um, rules after nung ating mga samples na yon. Remember that when you write for radio, you write for the ear. You are meant to be listened to. Pakikinggan ka lang nila. So yung pagsulat mo para kang nagsasalita. Parang merong tao sa paligid. <laughs> you know, eh, yung kung paano ka magsalita, hindi ba? At kung paano mo siya sasabihin on air. Number two, be clear. Be precise. Be concise. Maigsi lang. Malinaw. Hindi yung, di ba, yung sentences natin sobrang daming kama or baka meron pang uh, semi, ang tawag nung iba, semi-kama. Pero semi-colon po talaga. No? Yung semi-colon, na ibig sabihin may karugtong pa. Usually, we don't use that on air kasi nga one idea per sentence. No? Kailangan malinaw yung mga konsepto kasi audio lang eh. 
but of course, there are instances na pwede naman na i-refer natin sila. Sabi natin, that radio is a complementary medium. So kung may learning packet sila, ay pwede nating i-refer doon. Alright, mga bata, buksan nyo naman ang inyong learning packet number 4 at punta nyo ang page number 6. Sa page number 6, makikita nyo dyan ang, o, alibawa, isang chart. O, may mga ganon. Okay? O, oh, ayan, si Ati Daday, nandun na agad sa dulo. Alright. So, now, uh, very important also that you verify all information. Nako, oh, ito na nga yung example, no? So, alam nyo na yun, nag-trend, na, nag-trend ang DepEd, uh, uh, what do you call this, dry run, hindi ba? Dahil doon sa Tagaytay City is uh, whatever, whatever, picturesque yung uh, Taal uh, Volcano. So, kailangan may mag-verify ng content. Alright? Kailangan may, mag, may magsabi na, okay, Tama talaga yung content mo. So, wag natin siyang madaliin. Also, as much as possible, ito yung hindi na natin nagagawa kasi nagmamadali tayong lahat. Well, good thing na urong yung uh, simula ng klase. Pero i-pretest po natin ang ating mga broadcast materials. Paano natin ito ipipretest? Pwede nating ipabasa sa ating mga kapwa-guro. Sana may time pa yung kapwa-guro natin. O di kaya ay sa mga kagaya ng mga estudyante natin, hindi ba? So, ang sabi nga ni Roda, uh, mag-copy read or proofread po para maiwasan yung errors. Kasi kapag in-air na natin yan, remember, when you when you put it on air, hindi lang yung estudyante nyo yung makakapakinig niyan. Buong um, bayan ninyo or probinsya or rehiyon ninyo na, na, na naaabot ng radio station kung saan nyo siya i-air. So, kailangan po malinaw talaga. Verified yung information at na-pretest yung materials para alam natin kung Nag-gets ko ba yun nung pinakinggan? Buong mundo kasi naka-livestream kagaya nito, ate dada, hindi ba? So, kailangan ma-pretest natin siya. So, ma-test natin sa kapwa natin duro or dun sa ka-level ng estudyante na makikinig doon. O naintindihan mo ba yung lesson? Sobrang bilis kaya, di ba? Or uh, ano kaya? No? So, pwede natin yun. Kiss! Keep it short and simple. Alright? Avoid sibilance homonyms and tongue twisters. Ano po yung sibilance? Yung mga words na maraming S? Or kung marami talagang S, huwag nating uh, kumuha tayo ng talent na maayos magbanggit ng S. O di kayong S niya ay napuputo yung ganito siya magsalita ng S kasi maigsi ang gila. O so, medyo mahirap yun. Alam niyo naman yung homonyms, hindi ba? O so, halimbawa, yung isang word, meron pa siyang uh, kapareho ng bigkas pero may ibang meaning. So kapag Ginamit natin yun. Usually sa English, medyo maaring malito yung ating mga listeners. Pero again, kapag, um, kapag inevitable na magamit yung homonyms or words uh, na ganun, we have to explain. No? At saka yung mga tongue twisters. Alam nyo, kahit sa Tagalog, nung nagre-record kami, may mga times na nabubulol kami. So kapag ni- nung ni-rehearse namin, parang, ay wait, nabubulol ako. So Right there, and then we edit the script. No? So nakikita natin na ah, pwede pa pala siyang baguhin. Alright. O kailangan klaro ang pagkakabigkas upang maiwasan ang pagkalito ng listeners. Gusto kong mapakinggan to mamaya si Roda. Parang nakakatuwa. Very, very active siya. Okay. And finally, no, avoid words such as former and latter. Kasi eh, hindi naman masusundan na ng mga listeners na ah, ano nga yung huli niyang sinabi? Ano ba yung latter? Alright? Or yung, ah, yung former, teka, nalimutan ko na yung part na yun, ba? So, as, again, as much as possible, you just repeat the concept that needs to be um, explained. Okay? Ma- mouth, tongue, warm-up is advice. Ay, bukas! Gusto mo, i-discuss natin yan sa broadcast speech and performance. Alright, so, yan po. So far, ang aking maibabahagi sa inyo, ito po yung ilang mga ginamit kong uh, materyales. And I'd like us to uh, keep the conversation. Ako po ay nasa Twitter at Instagram. Mag-usap po tayo doon, magkwentuhan po tayo at I-A-M-C-H-K-O. Alright, so baka po may mga tanong kayo. Let's discuss it. Marami pong salamat. Well, thank you so much, Assistant Professor Mark Lester Chico. We are now going to read the questions of our viewers and participants for Professor Chico to answer. So we are now live on YouTube and Facebook. There are many DepEd schools 
uh, they're watching us right now. Also, our member SUCs of the consortium who are with us this afternoon. Nice. By the way, if yung ating mga We're teachers po sa Deaf Ed or even here. Oh, yeah. From uh, Sir Jinner Abrea Jaya. He said, Sir, paano ituro ang panitikan kung babasahin muna ang buod ng istorya sa radio script? Maaari bang bigyan na lang sila ng oras para basahin ito? Halimbawa, maglalaan ka ng walong minuto basahin ang buong Psych at Cupid pagkatapos ay tatanungin mo na lang po ng gabay na tanong maaari po ba yun? Kung first class niyo po, tas yung mga competency ay magbuha muna bago basahin ng story. Paki-explain po, talong po para ngayon. Alright, okay. Um, sorry, uh, kanina pala nabanggit ko lang uh, just to invite everybody, especially yung sa DepEd. We have a Facebook group, yung CBC-DepEd School on the Air. Pwede niyo po yung hanapin sa Facebook. Tapos meron po kaming mga sinishare doon na learning materials para sa paggamit ng radyo. So pwede po kayong pumunta ron. Um, kahit taga Ched, pwede na rin. Okay lang mag-join kayo. Just answer the questions. Uh, yung yung questions before kayo mag-join para instantly makasali kayo. Alright. Um, if you can please uh, type the question, uh, Jess, baka ma matatype doon sa chat group para masundan ko. Pero as I understand, no, yung tanong niya ay paano nga ba ituturo yung panidikan kung kailangan siya ay basahin muna. Aba, edi eh, basahin natin siya on air. Alam nyo, ang ginagawa nga namin ngayon ay meron kaming um, reader. No? Yung ito para sa mga grade 3 ito. Um, hindi ko kasi alam kung uh, pwede ko na siyang i-share sa inyo agad. Pero um, we're writing a script for Um, a school on the air or radio-based instruction for grade 3, kung saan ang ginagamit nila ay yung reader nga nung DepEd at USAID. So, ang ginawa namin, meron pa rin hosts, tapos may storyteller. Tapos yung storyteller, pwede siyang yung teacher mismo, tapos yung host, nagiging talent siya. Kasi di ba kapag, um, halimbawa, kapag merong storya, So, merong uh, siguro magbabasa ako ng isang example. Hindi ko na lang ishishare sa screen kasi baka hindi ko pa siya pwedeng ishare. Pero um, halimbawa, um, yung libro, The Five Sisters, for example. no So, babasahin muna namin yon Halimbawa, sa page one, The Five Sisters. Oh, uh, Siyempre, may mga prompts ka, no? may mga cue ka. Sabihin mo, ngayong, uh, right now, we are going to read the reader of uh, titled The Five Sisters. If you have your reader with you, turn them to page one. Chapter one. The five sisters are in the garden. Eli sees Amaya, a Maya bird in the sky and sees it fly away. It flies down the wide lane. She says to her sisters, I want to see where the bird is going. So pwedeng gawin nyo yun. Pwede kayong magbasa talaga ng libro on air. Pero kung ang tanong mo paano po kung sobrang haba tapos um, uh, hindi hindi talaga siya kaya doon sa 30 minutes, eh babasahin pa tatagal 'yon. Kailangan malinaw doon sa instructions mo na bago yung episode na 'yon, nabasa na ng estudyante yung yung uh, what do you call this, yung uh, yung libro or yung selection, no, yung excerpt. Kasi medyo weird naman kung bibigyan mo sila halimbawa na, oh, walong minuto, basahin nyo ngayon yan. Pwede siguro, just a few minutes, just to review the book or review the selection. But not use the time na halimbawa, nakatenga lang, talagang may background music ka lang. So, tapos magbaba sila, magbaba sila, magbaba sa sila on their own. Uh, mas maganda, sundan nyo siya. So, basahin nyo siya together. All right. So for the answer to Sir Jenner's question, mas mabuting basahin na lang po on air according to Sir Chico. Another question po, Sir Chico, from our YouTube live viewers from mm -hmm. Evsu College of Engineering, I guess, from Sir Rodrigo Baino. Good day, sir. Can you share your thoughts and ideas on how we will convert our modules in engineering subjects to radio scripts if we pursue to do on air? Thank you, Pa. Aba, edi dapat nakinig ka dun sa sinabi ko. Yun yung mga principles. Um, 
Pero depende, no? Uh, I understand may mga complex ideas talaga. Uh, for example, itong uh, yung water... Sorry, ano nga bang... Uh, ano nga bang title nitong uh, yung title ng learning packet na pinahiram sa akin ng ating mga organizers no doon sa engineering part so may mga math may mga math what do you call this may mga math um, equations mga formula ro na dahil hindi ko siya naintindihan um, hindi ko siya ma-translate pero for sure kung kayo yung teacher parang ang idea noon is write how you would speak write how you would explain that to your students. And being mindful that you are not in front of them, but you are only being listened to. That's why may kailangan pag-uulit. So sa engineering, uh, if you can give me a, a specific like topic, baka pwede natin uh, mapasadahan or baka you can share a sample, tingnan natin kung paano natin matatransform ang isang paragraph into um, a dialogue or a spiel. Pero yeah, the, the, the base, water supply planning and development yung title. Yeah, thank you very much po. So, um, ang kailangan lang doon, write the way you would speak it. Alam nyo ang isang technique, like for example, meron kang learning packet, di ba? So, tapos teacher ka naman, kabisado mo na yan, i-discuss mo siya, i-record mo siya sa, sa voice memos or whatever, audio recorder, tapos i-transcribe mo siya. Ibig sabihin, that's how you're going to sound on air. Pero hindi mo naman din kailangan gawin yun kasi habang nagta-type ka, pwedeng ang isipin mo ay kung paano ka magsasalita, paano mo yun i-explain, ita-type mo siya. So that's also one technique. I hope it helps. Alright, thank you so much, Sir Chico. For Sir Rodrigo, you can transcribe it after recording it on a recorder or maybe say uh, write it as you say it as according to Sir Chico. Another question po from our YouTube viewer, Amy Catholicos, is there a general rule for the number of pages for the radio scripts? Okay. Um, I think I mentioned this a while ago. If it doesn't have any other uh, instructions for technical, like wala namang masyadong ipapasok na, uh, na music or whatever, it's one minute per page. Like, Purely, you're going to read it lang. Pero kapag merong mga instructions sa music, uh, usually two to three minutes per page yung nagiging tagal niya. So, idea na rin yun na kapag umabot ka na halimbawa ng 15 pages, baka 30 minutes na yung abutin. Pero halimbawa, yung sample na pina... Yung, I think napakinggan din ninyo yun, um, or yung some of the depth ed teachers, no? Um, umabot kami ng 19 pages. So... It was about 40 minutes. So parang ganun yung, uh, ge yung uh, general computation. No? So yeah, ganun po siya. Si Hector Calumpiano, may tanong siya sa Zoom. Can we answer this? Yes, sir, please. I'm going yeah. to read it from Sir Hector Calumpiano. In our division, we were oriented to a tabular script format with only the copy block and QNs present. Is this a good enough template for Paul for novice broadcasters like us teachers? Okay. Um, I'm not sure. No? So, ang sinasabi mo yung copy block lang, tapos yung mga QNs, nandun, pero walang line number, walang source of sound. Can I share my screen? I'm going to share with you a sample um, of a script. Okay. Para lang makita at ma-appreciate natin bakit siya kailangan na ganon, no? Um, so, okay. So, ito, in fact, uh, i-reveal ko sa inyo kung paano siya nakatype, no? Pag tinignan nyo ito, nang meron siyang mga, naka-table form siya, hinati lang siya sa dalawa, tapos um, the left column ay line number the right column ay yung copy block plus yung source of sound. Tapos itong part na ito para nakahanging indensyo siya para siya kasi madaling makita uh, i-adjust nyo lang itong ruler. Alright, sabi ni Hector sorry gusto kong mapuntahan yung, uh, yung sinabi niya. No? Um, no line numbers, even the host name wala po. Mahihirapan tayo doon Hector eh kasi um Remember that we are going to read this. Um, uh, lalo na kapag nag-record tayo, mas madali nating masundan if we know kung sa... Ah, kasi sa bahay lang. Um, if, it, if it's 
working for you, go ahead. But really, I would advise that you you put line numbers para mat- makatulong sa inyo na makita rin kung gaano na pahaba. Also, it will give you an idea kung um, sumobra ka na ba kasi sumobra ka na ba dun sa oras or sa sobra ka ba sa oras sa haba ng mga pinagsasasabi mo. Parang ganon. So, halimbawa, itong script na ito na nakikita ninyo, so, line 18 ako, meron akong mga cues for music. Kasi, remember, um, you may not be writing just for yourself. no What we also aim is to share your script to to other teachers, perhaps. So, pwede natin siyang maibahagi. Um, having or using a format will help us also uh, master the art of writing for radio. So, yon. Thank you so much, Sir Chico. Very clear. Another question po. For the music, is there also a general guideline in choosing sound effects for radio script as well as for the radio talent? Okay, nako, nandun ka na agad sa, ano, sa talent and all. Um, well, unang-una, we are expecting that the radio talents would be the teachers themselves, no? Um, tomorrow, sa broadcast speech and performance, we will try to um, share, well, we will share with you, we will discuss the basics, no? Of how we can be good at delivering uh, the scripts on air. Um, yung paggamit naman ng mga music and sound effects, ituturo ito doon sa part ng production. But generally, dapat ito po ay free to use. No? Free to use. Ibig sabihin walang uh, copyright or kung may copyright man, ay nagpaalam tayo. No? So even yung paggamit uh, ng mga kanta or kahit minus one yan, may copyright pa rin po yun. Alright? So sagutin ko lang din yung tungkol sa format. No? So may sinasabi si Rona. Rona pala. but parang sinasabi ko kanina ay Roda? For instruction po kasi talaga yung script, lalo na kung magkaiba yung sumulat ng script at ang magbabasa, magre-record for broadcast. Tama yon. So if we are familiar with the same format of script, mas madali for us to adjust. Hindi yung parang, eh bakit? Ito puro caps. Kasi alam nyo sa, like, sa TV Patrol or sa, sa DZMM, sila po, walang line number, tapos babasahin lang. Kasi yung script nila is not meant for production. No? Ang kanila talagang script ay meant lang para basahin ng anchor. So kung yung anchor, uh, nakasanayan na nila yon babasahin nila lang siya. Pero yung atin kasing script, yung itinuro ko sa inyo, is a production script. So, ibig sabihin, ipapasa mo ito sa mga tao sa production like your technician or your editor and your talents. Yun. Is the line number continuous or by page? Um, hindi po siya continuous. What we do is nagre-restart po kami per page. So, yon. Sorry, sinagot ko na yung mga tanong na nababasa ko. Yeah, all right. All right. Another question po, Sir Chico. Since we want our students to learn by making our lesson simple and understandable, can we use the mother tongue to explain our lessons? Just your insight, po. Thanks. Hi, definitely, po. Definitely, you have to use your mother tongue. It's just that my mother tongue is Tagalog, no? But yeah, I understand, especially for grades one to three. And also, if you're going to use that for even sa college, no? Um, you can mix it. Like, I know that the language that we use in teaching is English, generally, hindi ba? But if you have to use your mother tongue, definitely you have to write your script in mother tongue. Um, what we're doing now with uh, our um, support with DepEd is that we write the scripts in English and in Filipino, and then we will have the teachers just translate it for their use pagdating sa mga regional na may kanya-kanya pong um, wika no? at may kanya-kanyang lengguahe. Naku, buwan ng wika nga pala ngayon. Oo. So, tama po, maaari nyo pong gamitin ang inyong uh, inang wika. Sorry, ano nga po ba yung mother tongue? Inang wika? Ano po ba yun sa... Yun po. Alright, so thank you so much. Assistant Professor Mark Lester Chico. So we are going to read lang po some comments here from our Facebook and YouTube. Sir Vix said, thank you, sir. It was such a very clear and precise discussion. And there are many more who said, thank you, sir. Good job. 
and it was really a comprehensive talk. Thank you so much once again, Assistant Professor Mark Lester Chico of UP Los Baños. We are now going to award the Certificate of Recognition to our Session 3 speaker. And to present the award is our very own Summer State University President and the Chair of the Technology Infrastructure and Support. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dr. Marilyn B. Cardazzo. Okay, thank you very much. It is both an honor and privilege for me to present the certificate of recognition to our speaker. I'm sure everyone will agree with me that we had a very enjoyable session, both rewarding and a learning experience for all of us. Thank you very much, Mr. Chico. May I read the certificate of recognition? Eastern Visayas Higher Education Institutions Flexible Learning Management System Consortium. This certificate of recognition is awarded to Assistant Professor Mark Lester M. Chico for his invaluable insights, expertise, and service rendered as resource speaker on the topic from learning packets to radio scripts are translating self-learning modules into radio-based instruction, writing scripts for school on the air lessons during the webinar series on on-air learning, rediscovering radio for flexible learning on August 17, 2020. Given the 17th, 17th day of August, 2020, signed Dr. Dimenador O. Aguirre Jr co-chair technology and infrastructure and support committee signed yours truly chair technology infrastructure and support committee signed dr victor sicaniso jr interim chair eastern visayas higher education institution flexible learning management system consortium signed dr aldrin adari lag chair commissioner let's give our speaker a virtual round of applause. Ay, maraming maraming pong salamat. Nakakatuwa po. Um, grabe. Uh, my heart is filled with joy this afternoon. Nagulat nga ako eh. Ang bilis pala natin. I was expecting a lot of questions. But um, if you still have a lot, if you still have more questions, just uh, reach me through Twitter or Instagram. Mag-usap po tayo ron. Um, so to the EVHEIs, FLMSC to uh, the schools who are uh, are our host for this afternoon. Maraming marami pong salamat sa inyo. Um, thank you for rediscovering radio for flexible learning. I think we're going back to basics as we move to the future. So tulong tulong po tayo at wala pong iwanan. Thank you so much, Assistant Professor Lester. Chico. Indeed, alam ko nga, ready-ready ng ating mga teachers to translate their modules into radio scripts. Before we share to you the attendance slash evaluation link, we will first show you a video on how to utilize an easy-to-use multi-track audio editor and recorder which you can download and use, the Audacity. This is recommended by Professor Chico for you to watch because this is an essential aid for tomorrow's session on broadcast speech and performance. Please watch this. Once again, we would like to thank everyone who have joined us this morning and this afternoon. And we also acknowledge once again our Chad Commissioner Aldrin Ederlag, who was with us uh, lately this morning. And also to our Chad Regional Office 8 Regional Director, Dr. George M. Colorado Sasso 3. Thank you so much, sirs. And of course, to our speaker, uh, this morning. 
And so we are now going to have a video for the Audacity. Please watch it. Magandang umaga. Magandang tanghali at magandang hapon at magandang gabi sa ating mga tagapakinig at mga tagapanood. Today, mag-aaral tayo kung paano gumamit ng Audacity. Ito yung pinaka-latest na version nila ng Audacity at available ito sa kanilang website. Yung link papunta dun sa website kung saan nyo pwedeng ma-download itong software na ito ay nasa description ng video na ito or nasa comments. Uh, pero ilalagay ko na rin siya dito sa screen ngayon. So, bago tayo magsimula, tingnan muna natin yung interface or yung mismong window ng Audacity. Ano? Kita natin na parang daming kailangan pindutin. Pero sa totoo lang, ang kailangan nyo lang pindutin ay yung nandito sa part na ito ng screen. Ito yung ating mga tools o ito yung ating uh, mga gagamitin para i-manipulate itong software na ito. Una, ito yung ating selection tool. Ayan, kita nyo? Selection tool. Ito yung gagamitin natin para mag-select. Ito naman yung time shift tool. Uh, it lets us move itong mga tracks na nandito. Ano yung other tools? Mamaya pag-uusapan natin yan. Sa tabi naman yan, dito sa kaliwa, makikita nyo ang inyong recording controls. Ito yung record button. Tapos naman itong iba, parang sa radyo lang. Madalas din... Madalas din nyo ito makikita sa mga music player ng inyong mga cellphone. Ito yung play button. Ito yung stop button. At ito naman yung pause button. Tapos ito yung start of recording at ito naman yung end of recording pero bihira nyo gagamitin yan. So sa dami ng mga buttons na ito, ang kailangan nyo lang talaga ay itong anim na ito. Record. Pause. Stop. Play. Selection tool. At time shift tool. Magagamit din yung iba, pero hindi ganun kadalas. Ngayong alam na natin yung tools, set up na natin yung mic natin para pwede na tayong mag-record. Dito natin yan gagawin sa ibaba ng pause button. Pag hindi natin nakikita yung mic natin, ibig sabihin na hindi pa tayo makakapag-record. So piliin lang natin yung mic natin dito at dito. Siguraduhin nyo rin sakto ang volume ng mic ninyo. Dito nyo chechecken yan sa upper right corner ng window ng Audacity. Okay na, nakasetup na tayo. Pwede na tayong mag-record. Tulad ng nasabi natin kanina, itong anim na buttons lang na ito ang kailangan natin para makapag-record. Pangunahin dyan na yung itong record button. Try natin pindutin at mag-record ng isang sentence. Pagkatapos kong magsalita ay may maririnig kayong bell. Okay, kinlik natin yung stop button para tumigil. Play nga natin. Select tool at dito sa simula. Pagkatapos kong magsalita ay may maririnig kayong bell. Ayun, nakarecord na tayo. Counting tips lang sa pagre-record. Make sure na meron kayong mga 1 to 2 seconds na katahimikan bago kayong magsalita. Mamaya malalaman nyo rin kung bakit nyo kailangan yan. Ngayon malalaman na natin kung bakit natin kailangan ng konting katahimikan sa simula ng ating recording. Ito ay para sa noise reduction o sa pagtanggal ng ingay sa ating recording. Madali lang to. Una, gamit ng selection tool, i-highlight ninyo yung silence na part ng inyong voice recording. Drag nyo lang. Tapos, i-click nyo yung effect button dito sa itaas. Effect. Tapos, i-click nyo yung noise reduction. Noise reduction. Tapos, get noise profile yung sunod nyong i-click. 
Ngayon naman, i-highlight nyo ang inyong buong recording mula simula hanggang katapusan. So yan, i-click and drag natin yung buong yan. Tapos, balik tayo dun sa effect, noise reduction. Tapos, saka natin ngayon i-click yung OK. Yan. Yun lang. Mawawala na ang background noise ng inyong recording after nyo sundan yung mga steps na yun. Pero para sa ating mga tagapanood, hindi ibig sabihin nito na merong magic na laging tatahimik yung ating mga recording ha. Ang kaya lamang nitong tanggalin ay yung mga constant na noise. Siyempre, maganda pa rin na sa tahimik na lugar tayo mag-record. Ngayon naman ay pag-aaralan natin kung paano maglagay ng mga sound effects. Pakinggan nga natin yung recording natin kanina. Pagkatapos kong magsalita ay may maririnig kayong bell. Oh, pero nasan yung bell? Eto, ilalagay na natin yung bell. Kita nyo yun? Kinlik and drag ko lang yung file na kailangan ko papunta dito sa Audacity. Kung meron kayong mga sound effect na na-record o nakuha sa ibang source, pwede drag dito sa Audacity. Pag nalagay na natin yan dyan, gamitin nyo lang yung Time Shift Tool. Ulit, nandito yung Time Shift Tool. At i-drag nyo yung sound effect ninyo para sumakto yung timing. Pakinggan nga natin ulit. Select Tool. Dito sa simula. Tapos tayo mag-play. Pagkatapos kong magsalita ay may maririnig kayong bell. Ayun na! May sound effect na tayo. Paano naman pag gusto nyo ng music sa simula ng inyong broadcast tapos unti-unting mawawala ito bago magsalita yung speaker? Madali lang yan. Tulad nung ginawa natin sa bell, idrag nyo lang ulit dito yung music. Ayan. Dahil mukhang medyo mahaba yung music, kailangan natin siya ikat. So, i-click nyo lang kung saan part nyo siya gustong putulin gamit nitong selection tool. Yan. Siguro mga dito. Yan. Diyan natin siya gustong putulin. Tapos, click nyo tong edit. Dito sa itaas. Edit. Tapos, clip boundaries. Tapos, split. Yan. Ngayon, Pwede na natin i-delete yung part na hindi natin kailangan. Gamit itong time shift tool. Usad lang natin siya ng konti para humiwalay. Balik tayo dun sa selection tool. Highlight natin itong lahat ng ito. Tapos, punta tayo dito sa edit. Tapos, pindutin natin itong delete. Yan. Pagbalik natin dun. Ayan na. Nakat na siya. Sunod nating mga gamit na tool dito ay itong zoom tool. Click natin yung zoom tool ng paulit-ulit hanggang sa lumaki yung view natin sa ating window. Mas madali kasi mag-edit pagka mas kita mo. Ngayon, pakinggan natin. Pagkatapos kong magsalita ay may maririnig kayong bell. Parang hindi ganun kaganda no? Siguro mas maganda kung iusod natin ng konti, pakanan, yung ating bell at yung ating voice recording. So iusod natin siya unti-unti. Para maayos yung timing. Tapos magagamit na natin ngayon yung ating envelope tool. Kasi gusto natin itong ating music unti-unting nawawala bago magsalita yung ating recording. So gagamitin natin yung ating envelope tool. Click natin yan. Click natin yung kung saan nagtatapos yung ating music. Tapos kiklik natin kung saan natin gusto magsimula mag-fade yung ating music. Tapos Saan natin siya i-drag up or i-drag down?
idadrag din natin siya left to right para makontrol natin kung gaano kabilis mag-fade yung ating music. At ayan, pakinggan nga natin. Pagkatapos kong magsalita ay may maririnig kayong bell. Ayan, may fading effect na yung music natin. Ngayon, dahil tapos na tayo sa paggawa ng ating file, pwede na natin ito i-save as one file. Ganito natin yan gagawin. Dito sa itaas, i-click lamang ang file. Export. Tapos, export as mp3. Tatanungin niya tayo kung saan natin gusto mag-save. Ako, sinisave ko yan lagi sa ating music folder. Tapos, papangalanan na natin ng tama yung file natin. Sa ngayon, papangalanan ko muna siyang test. Test.mp3 Tapos, ikiklik natin yung save. Meron lalabas na ganitong warning. Huwag kayong matakot. Click nyo lang. Okay. Tapos, click nyo lang. Okay ulit. Ngayon, narito na tayo sa ating folder. Pakinggan nga natin yung ginawa natin. Pagkatapos kong magsalita ay may maririnig kayong bell. Ayan. Dito na nagtatapos ang basic lessons natin sa Audacity. Kung meron kayong mga katanungan, ilagay lamang sa comments ng video na ito. Maraming salamat! Well, that's it. The Audacity provides you with a full set of tools that you can use to edit your on-air lessons. Plus, it has an accessible interface which is very easy to use. If you want to re-watch the video, we are going to send you the link on the Zoom chat box right now and on the comment section on our Facebook and YouTube Live. It will also be posted later on our Summer State University's official Facebook page. Just find www.facebook.com slash SSU Catalogin. For your attendance slash evaluation this afternoon, please visit the link posted on your screens now. There you have it. If you have a QR scanner um, in your phones, you could also scan our QR code here posted on your screens, or you may visit the link shown on your screen. For the information of everyone, one of the highlights of the on-air learning webinar on Rediscovering Radio for Flexible Learning is the online roadshow of on-air learning, which will showcase your outputs of the entire webinar by translating learning packets to radio scripts. For your reference, um, I am going to say the roadshow flow and the order of presentation with the assigned academic expertise to be presented by one of your faculty on August 20, 2020, that is on Thursday. So we are expecting that you send your recorded videos on, on or before Wednesday afternoon. With the scripts, yes, kindly send it to us here at SSU. For the morning session, we will have the Samar and Biliran SUCs. SU, for the academic field of SU, agriculture. You'll have agriculture. For NWSSU, you will have the information technology. For the UEP, you'll have nursing. For the BIPSU, you'll go with management slash HRM. And for Summer State University, you'll have fishery slash 
Marine Sciences. And on the afternoon um, on uh, Thursday, we will have the Leyte SUCs. For EVSU, you'll have Accountancy, LNU, Teacher Education. For SLSU, you will have Engineering. For PIT, you will go with Maritime. And for VSU, you'll have the Development Communication. It should be a 10 minute recorded lesson using the following guidelines. One, script, transformation of lesson into a broadcast script. Two, hosts and radio teacher, voice and performance. And the third, technical, the music, the sound effects and the editing. And so may, may we request your focal person to uh, send us the name of the official presenter together with the soft copy of the recorded lesson and its script in the afternoon of August 19, 2020. And if you have any clarifications, please feel free to contact Dr. Redentor S. Palencia. His email is redentor.palencia at ssu.edu.ph. Before you go, may I request our Zoom participants again to please turn on your cameras so we'll have a photo opportunity together with Assistant Professor Lester Chico, our speaker this afternoon. We are going to wait for all our participants here in Zoom as they open their cameras. Yes, Assistant Professor Chico is now ready to pose his biggest smile. So once again, thank you so much, Assistant Professor Mark Lester Chico, for your very comprehensive and enjoyable talk. All right, again, I am requesting everyone on Zoom to please turn on your cameras for us to have a photo opportunity before we end our afternoon session. Okay, look at camera. Still waiting, kindly turn on your cameras. Oh, according here, their videos have been disabled by the host. So we are now working on it. We are still waiting for our other participants. So just wait, Bob. Well. Okay, so tomorrow we are going to have another set of audible speakers to talk about our sessions four and five. You just picture. Picture. Okay, so I guess we are all now ready for our photo opportunity. In a count of three, some um, your sweetest smiles and uh, in three, two, one, smile. I uh, am. Yeah. This time, we allow all our Zoom participants to again write on our whiteboard screen or maybe doodle what you think of this afternoon's webinar. This is our way of expressing our gratitude to our third session speaker, Professor Mark Lester G. To do this, I'll talk to you. Did it just yes? So to do this on top of your screens, kindly click on the options, then annotate, and you may now write or doodle on our screen. This will be seen live on our Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, and so we can see now many doodles and messages to our speaker this afternoon. 
says thank you. There are heart emoticons. Yes. All right. So thank you all to all our Zoom participants. Thank you for being so participative. And uh, once again, to all our speakers today, Professor Lester Urdan and Professor Mark Lester Chico, of course, to our Chad Commissioner, Aldrin A. Dirilag, Chad Regional Office A Director, Dr. George M. Colorado Sasso III, our SUC Presidents, Private HEI Presidents, the faculty of the member SUCs of the consortium, and the DAPA teachers from all over Eastern Messiah, who also joined us. Thank you so much. We hope to be with you until Thursday. So see you tomorrow, everyone. The Eastern Visayas Higher Education Institution's Flexible Learning Management System Consortium will continue to fulfill its mission of making sure learning continues amidst disruption. Tomorrow, we will still be having Assistant Professor Mark Lester Chico to tackle on broadcast speech and performance. Also joining us tomorrow is an AM station news writer and program development head and a various media presenter user and editor as they teach us how to produce radio IMs. So please don't miss out. Once again, this has been your moderator for this afternoon. I am Jessica Kama of Summer State University. Let us continue to innovate, build, and serve. See you tomorrow, everyone. Bye. <laughs>